Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. Welcome, welcome. If you're a kid, just wave. Some big kids in this room too. Awesome, everywhere, yeah. Well, thanks for being here. I'll try not to put you to sleep. But I can't promise anything. No. One day, uh, a little girl noticed that her mother had a few gray hairs appearing on her head. Uh-oh. Why is that, she asked. Because, explained the mother, every time you do something naughty and make me unhappy, one of my hairs turns white. The child thought for a moment and said, is that why all of grandma's hair is white? <laughs> you must have been a really bad girl. <laughs> oh my goodness, kids will say the funniest things, won't they? Kids, it's so good to have you here, and this is a special service for us. Every once in a while we get to do this. We haven't done this since before the pandemic, and uh, so we're grateful we can have you here with us because Paul is talking about, we've been going through a series, kids, of Ephesians, and we're in Ephesians 6, 1 through 4 today, and Paul talks about how God has changed us from the inside out and all the way to, it changes even our homes and our families, and if, we're, if we have Christ in our homes, we can have strong families for the Lord, and Paul gives instructions to the church on what a strong family looks like and really the relationship and the role of fathers, but also parents in general. Parents can, any parent can um, apply this to your life today. And so we're in Ephesians chapter six, verse one. If you want to turn your Bibles there and I have it on the screen here, but you can also use your Bibles. It says, children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord for this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. And that promise is this. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you and you will have a long life on the earth. So kids, here's what this means. Uh, you're called to obey and honor your parents in this relationship and there's few reasons why. The first one is really simple. It's the natural order in creation. You came into this world and you were a little baby and mom and dad were called by God to take care of you and to be your overseer and to be your parent and to help nurture and grow you. And that's just the natural order of creation is that you are called to submit or obey your parents in all things out of honor and respect for them. Now, obeying is also because it's obedience to God. In the Christian home, as a Christian, kids, you're obeying God because uh, you're obeying your parents because you're also obeying God. And, uh, you know, this actually really goes all the way through uh, even college age, if you're still living in the home, maybe, maybe like first, like graduating. By the way, congratulations, all you graduates. Uh, this past uh, high school, college, There's a little bit of a fine line here. As soon as you hit adulthood, youth, you uh, don't necessarily have to follow exactly everything, uh, as your parents would say. Some, of you, some parents have different rules if you live at home still. Am I right, parents? Have some different rules? And so you gotta follow your, your parents' rules in the home. There's, there's house rules, so make sure you take note of that. Um, but at the same time, Honoring your parents is just as important as obeying. So we even honor them after we move out of the home as well. And I'll share that in a moment. Um, but we obey because it's a command from God. And it's also the right thing to do, our verse says. It's a command from God. It's the right thing to do. And because we're in a relationship with God too, we want to do what God wants us to do. And that is to obey our parents and honor them. And Obey because it will result in an enjoyable and long life on earth. Well, what does that mean? Um, kids, when mom and dad say, don't play in the street, there's a practical, physical uh, 
reason why, because you will live longer. <laughs> if you, if, I don't want to give any ideas, but do never, never put electrical devices around bodies of water and get in them, right? There's a reason why parents say, don't do that. And it's because they love you and they want you to live. But this has to do with God's blessing too. That when we obey God and obey our parents, God's favor is upon you and will bless you. Kids, how many want God to bless you and have your favor upon on you and be with you and help you in life? How many would like that? Okay. The promise is, is that if you do that, and I want God's help for my life, all the time, because he is, he's all-knowing, he's all-powerful, he's provider, he's all these things. If you obey your parents, you have the favor and the blessing of God on your life. Now, he says obey, which means to listen. So to listen to your parents and then do as they say, that would be the next thing you do. But he also says in this scripture, kids, to honor your parents. And what does honor mean? Honor is simply to respect those who are over you in the Lord. Honoring our parents means to show them respect and love, to care for them as long as they need you. Guess what, kids? One day you might have to take care of your parents. And you do that out of honor because they'll get older and they may need some help physically. And out of honor, you take care of your parents. Okay? And then it says here, they need you and bring honor to them by the way we live. Now, this isn't about image or making them look good, but it's the idea that we can bring honor and joy to our parents when we live the right way. In other words, we help show them that we love them and we thank them for what they did for us growing up. And so when we live a good life, obedient life, we help them see that they did a great job. And by the way, kids, every once in a while, we need to say thank you to our parents, right? There's not many kids here, so I didn't hear a lot of amens on that one. We say thank you, and we appreciate them. Um, Now, the calling on your parents' kids is very great. They are called to lead you, and they have a huge responsibility. It's so important that we have parents that help you and guide you in your life. But there are times, there is one moment where, parents, you'll have to explain this later, possibly. There is a moment where maybe, kids, you don't have to listen to your parents. And that's if they give you instruction that is not godly. If it is counter to scripture, if it is not biblical, godly advice, and it actually is evil or harmful, that is a time where you don't have to listen. Now, the question is, do you know what the Bible says? And do you know what the world would say? And so I know a lot of kids now are going to go home and try to find loopholes in the Bible. But there are times as parents that we have given wrong advice. For instance, just tell them I'm not home. That is a white, a little white lie, a little tiny lie that turns into a bigger lie, doesn't it? So parents, we need to be careful that we don't ask our kids to do something that is unbiblical. But kids, almost all the time, right? All the time, your parents are giving you godly instruction to follow. And so that's the bottom line. We follow it. And uh, parents, all the more reason why we need to make sure we are giving godly advice. But I have a feeling my kids are going to start studying the Bible more after I just said that. Now, the Bible talks in the Old Testament about wise kids. And here's what the scripture says. A wise child brings joy to a father. A foolish or silly kid that makes the wrong choices, well, they bring grief to a mother. Now, reality is you bring grief to both, but I find this kind of funny because if you bring grief to a mother, guess who you bring grief to as well? Dad. Fathers, we, we don't want angry moms. We're scared of angry moms. Kids, if you make mom angry, then things don't go well for dad. And so it's good if you, you know, keep uh, loving and respecting mom and obeying her so that dad um, has a good life too, a long, enjoyable life. 
So true, though. But yes. So a wise kid will, will obey and bring joy to mom and dad. And one that's not so wise, well, they'll, they won't obey, they won't respect, they won't honor their parents, and it brings grief to both, really. But here's the positive one. The father of godly children has cause for joy. What a pleasure to have children who are wise. What are wise children? Those who listen to God and his instruction, and one of those things is to obey and honor your parents. Wise kids do that, and it brings joy to the whole home. Children, when you obey, whether you're in the house still or not, when you obey your parents and you're obeying God and you bring joy into that home, and it's just a pleasant home whenever we do that. It's such a simple message from, from Paul, but it's so needed to be reminded. Now, now, kids, your parents have a major role in this too. And they, Paul only gives one verse to this, but it's huge and it's packed with a lot. So now I'm going to teach your parents a little something on what we are supposed to do. And verse 4 says, Fathers, do not provoke your children or agitate or embitter them to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. What does this mean? Well, first of all, we see in here, Paul highlights two of the most important things in parenting. And the first one is relationship. And the second is training or discipline and instruction of the Lord or in the Lord. So relationship and then the instruction and the discipline. So let's go to the first one. Relationship. We see here that a proper relationship with our children comes first. Now, for all of you who do not have kids today, and maybe I'm causing you to tune out, I want you to think about this. If you're helping other people follow Jesus, this is applicable to you too. And maybe one day you'll disciple or help someone follow Jesus and they have some parenting struggles and they need help. So take notes, remember these things to use as you help other people in their families. So we see here that a relationship comes first. How the father treats the kid really matters. And fathers are crucial in forming our children's view of the heavenly father. Dad, you're important. Because how you love and instruct your kids is an example of God's love and instruction to the whole world. And my heart goes out for families where the father isn't there or is not able to be there for whatever reason it may be. And I want you to know, single moms, that God is going to show up for your kids. God is going to fill that void. And, and mom, you get to take this role because of it. And you get to help lead the way. And God is a heavenly father who will take care of your kids. I remember I had, a, I had a dad, and I still have a dad. He's awesome. He's here. I didn't mean that by any way, such a form like that. And... Um, but even with my dad, God still showed up in my room at night and spoke to me. I would sense God's presence in my room. He would speak to me as I would read the Bible, as I would pray. I could feel God's love flood my room as I was on my knees and writing notes in the Bible and, and such. God spoke to me too, not just my earthly father, but my heavenly father. And moms, keep doing an awesome job. And we're here for you to, to continue to help with your kids. Fathers, we have a crucial role, and how we treat our children is key to whether they listen to our instruction. It's true that relationship is more important than rules. Relationship comes first. There's a reason why there should be a healthy relationship first in verse 4 before the instruction of the Lord. Did Jesus come down and give us a bunch of rules first? No, he came down and began to love people, call people that no one would think would come near him. He would go and help people. He called in disciples that no one would, he chose the disciples. Do you know that back in the day that disciples picked their rabbis and teachers? Jesus was different. He picked his students and he picked up, he picked some messed up ones too because he loves. And then from that love, he begins to correct and teach. Well, one of the quotes, uh, well, let me go to it. Josh McDowell, rules without relationships leads to rebellion. A famous quote that I've grew up hearing all the time 
And as a youth pastor, I would see how key it would be to have a relationship before you had a bunch of rules for those around you. Now, the other side of that would be provoking. Provoke means to stir up, to agitate, to discourage, and be hard on your children. And it's even worse if you don't have a relationship with them, fathers or parents. It's even worse damage if there's no relationship and all there is is rules. And so this is not of God. This is not what God has for us. Here's an example of provoking uh, to anger. Warren Wearsby gives a few examples. He says, uh, fathers provoke their children, or parents do, um, and discourage them by saying one thing and then doing another. By always blaming and never praising. By being inconsistent and unfair in discipline and by showing favoritism in the home. Also, by making promises and not keeping them, and by making light of problems that to the children are very important. That one cuts a little deep because we can agitate our kids if we're too hard on them or if we operate in any of those ways that he says. And we need to be careful that our leading of parenting is clothed in love and relationship, and then instruction. There's something important to remember. We need to remember that the right relationships with our children are more important than the right performance by our children. Let that one sink in a little bit. Let that one sink in a little bit. Because we want our kids to follow all the rules without that relationship with them first. We got to be careful of that. I'm not saying that's us. I'm just saying be careful if that is you. We want our kids to look right, to do the right things, to appear like they're doing the right things, to make us look good. But the reality is they're looking for a relationship with us. We need to remember that the right relationships with our children are more important than the right performance by our children. If you want your kids to obey rightly, then we must live and relate to them rightly in the right way. The first thing our children need is our love, our nurture and care. And this takes something more precious than money. It takes time. Quality time with our kids. It's in our quality time where we can show them affection and attention. Dads, give your kids a hug. If you weren't hugged, then start hugging. It works. Give your kids the words, I love you. Learn to say it because you are loved. And I'm sorry that you didn't have that in your life. If that is you, I'm sorry that that was missing in your life. But my son and daughter need my embrace. And they need me to praise them and not always get on them for things they've done wrong. And they need my hugs. And they need me to say, I'm proud of you. And we got to take time to even notice those things. It's when we are in relationship with our kids, we actually can see what God is doing in them. And also what we can do as fathers or as parents to help them. Now, parents, there are boundaries to this important close relationship. You ready? Parents, you should be close and loving to your kids, but you are not their best friend. You're better than a best friend. You're a parent. You're a mom. You're a dad. You're a grandparent. Maybe you take care of kids. You're a guardian. You are better than a best friend. Hey, your best friends are awesome, kids. They're great, but nothing's better than a parent because they will love you when no one else is there for you. They take care of you every single day. They put a roof over your head. I'm not going to go through the list because I'm starting to preach at my kids right now. <laughs> Just kidding. They do so much for you, and when a friend drops you, guess who's there? And parents, 
You don't have to be your kid's best friend and give them everything they want. Your kids don't know all the time what they need. They have wants, but they don't always know what they need. And their friends are the same age as them, so they definitely are also in the same boat and don't know what they need. When it comes down to it, in my home, it goes however mom and dad dad says it goes. Mom and dad get the final say. And you know what? That's because I'm a parent and I love my kids. And I want the best for them. And I know the truth of the word of God. Amen. So mom and dad, take the pressure off of trying to get your kids to like you. The Bible doesn't say children like your kids. The Bible says obey, respect, and honor. Sorry, doesn't say children like your kids. Sorry, children like your parents. It says honor, obey, and respect your parents. You know why it's better to be your parent? Because you won't just get a like from your kid, you'll get love and respect from your kid. So we love our kids, even if it means hard choices. Now he says to train them in discipline or training and instruction that comes from the Lord. What does that mean? And that's a big part here because the relationship is first. And I wanna encourage all dads, all parents to really build a relationship with your kids, have quality time, love on them, be with them. And at the same time, because of that relationship, now you can pour instruction into your kids. And so let's go into this. Bring them up means to nourish tenderly or to give careful and loving care. So there's that relational aspect again. Discipline means training and correction and character. Uh, This can also mean consequences. It can mean, um, you know, having to, you know, bring a, a, a little consequence into poor decisions that they made. All right, but it mainly has to do with training them up into and correcting their walk into being more like Christ. Their decisions, their mouths, their words, their actions, anything, their speech. Instruction means teaching and demonstrating the path of living a godly life. How does a Christian live? Well, by the way, parents, if you're looking for how does a Christian live, the best example, because the Bible is big, isn't it? There's a lot to try to teach your kids. I want to give you a shortcut, and then you can start building from out from that. Show them Jesus. Jesus is the example for your kids. Jesus is the example for your, for your grandkids, grandparents. Show them Christ. Teach them Jesus, because the Bible revolves around Jesus and the message of Christ. So use that to help you get to the point. How do we train and instruct? So let me give you some how-tos. And then we'll close. Know God's parenting manual. The Bible is God's parenting manual. Know it. In 2, Corinthians, or 2 Timothy 3, we're going to go to that. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17 says, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. And Proverbs 22, 6 says, we all know this one, train up a child the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. When I read that, I always think about this one thing, though. How do I train a child in the way to go if I haven't gone that way first? So parents, we must apply the scripture first. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17 is for us first. And here's why. If we don't live it, our kids are going to call that out. They can see it real quick, can't they? If we want to show them, by the way, the way to go, the best way is to actually show it and not just tell it. And so as we live the right way, the Christ way, we can train not just from speech, but life and give examples of our own experiences and how we've obeyed God and passed things down. We're going to go to demonstrate and teach the word of God as you live. So we have the Bible as the manual for parenting, 
But now the best way of doing that is demonstrating it and teaching it with your life and with your words. If you have your Bibles, go to Deuteronomy 6. This is a powerful parenting scripture. This is really for the whole community of believers at this time. And he's talking to parents. And Deuteronomy is in the Old Testament. It's the, it's the fifth book in. Deuteronomy chapter 6. And I, I'm actually going to focus on verse 4 instead of 1 through 9. I'm going to start with verse 4 and go through 9. Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Just, just listen to how they would there to pass these things about God. Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Now, just so you know, in Scripture, that literally means there's only one God. Real quick little teaching for us parents. I've run into some parents who are Christians who say, well, I'm going to let my kids decide what God to serve. Scary. There is only one God, according to the Bible. All other gods have been made up. And the devil's using it to confuse the world on which one to pick. But there is only one supreme God. Uh, kids, there is only one God. Just so you know. Now that sounds a little arrogant, but we really want people to go to heaven and be with God forever because he's greater than falling for a false god and the Old Testament says that they literally fall over on shelves because they're just pieces of wood that people have made as objects of worship, to worship. They're objects, they're not an actual being. So I care about my kids so much, I'm gonna tell them the truth. Even if their best friend says something different. However, as parents, I make sure my, best, my kids' best friends are also in God. And it's okay, parents, to be strong about that, too. Because your kids' best friends are very big influences in your kids' lives. So just be careful of that. This is what he says, verse 5. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. That's, that's to the community and especially to the parents. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. So commit yourself to them. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed and when you're getting up. Tie them on your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Back then, they would have little boxes and they would put scripture on them or a little box on their head and they had scriptures on them for the main purpose of remembering them on the mind, keeping them on the mind. Today, we don't do that, but I do see how we have families who put up scripture in homes. I think that's really cool. It's really cool, because I'm not gonna walk around with a box on my head. That's just kind of weird. That was for that time. Now, Psalm 78 gives us a powerful charge, not just what we just saw there, but a powerful charge. In Psalm 78, verse four through eight, it says, we will not hide these truths from our children. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about his power and his mighty wonders. Parents, when God does something great in your life, share it with your kids. Has God done something great in your life in the past? Share those stories with your kids. For he issued his laws to Jacob and he gave his instructions to Israel. He commanded our ancestors to teach them to the children so the next generation might know them even the children not yet born, and they in turn will teach their own children. So each generation should set, it, set its hope anew on God, not forgetting his glorious miracles and obeying his commands. Then they will not be like their ancestors, stubborn, rebellious, and unfaithful, refusing to give their hearts to God. Do you see how key it is that we pass on God to our kids? So they can pass on to the next generation and then that next generation can, be, can learn these powerful things about God. Well, what's interesting is that takes relationship. It takes time. It takes patience. And what's interesting is it starts with us first, that we have an experience with God and that pours out because we reproduce who we are. Just so you know. We reproduce who we are. Look at your kids. They're going to follow your steps more than you realize. We reproduce who we are. So who are we 
It's so important that we make sure we are in love with God, following God, experiencing God, so we can pass those things on. And demonstrating and teaching the word of God is not just a set time or moment in a day or a week, even though you should have those times. Passing God on to your kids is a lifestyle. This is so important. And lifestyle is who we are and why we live. So God and his word isn't a random and awkward conversation. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. God talk, in other words, is common and expected in your home. When God is that central in your home, children will be more open and engaged in the conversations and teaching. What am I saying here? I'm saying, let God be central in your life. Let him be so full in your life, he pours out in your everyday conversations with your kids. That's what he was saying in Deuteronomy 6. Pass these things on. There was an intentionality of sitting kids down and passing these things on. They, they gathered together for worship. They heard the, the prophets. They got together to hear the Old Testament as time went on. And the commandments, they sat them down and read the Ten Commandments. But at the same time, they talked about them all day because God was central in their lives as parents. Make God central in your life and he will come out. Just so you know, children learn the most, you may have noticed this, from observable and experiential learning. They need to see us live it out and talk about it because our lives teach more than our lectures. I have done this, and I, want, I apologize to my kids. I have lectured them out of frustration and have even used scripture to back it up. That is not a good time to finally talk about God. Oh, yeah, well, the Bible says, you got to obey me. Or other scriptures. I've done that, and I felt bad. It's always reactive instead of proactive, right? No, we want to be proactive. Sometimes we can be too reactive. And now we finally want to parent and guide them. No, we need to make it a part of our lifestyle. And you know what happens when God is a lifestyle in your home? None of the conversations are as awkward because God talk is common and normal. We, uh, in my home, we teach through conversations. Uh, we teach through weekly or daily devotions. We teach through worship music and Christian movies, videos, resources like Right Now Media. We have Right Now Media here at the church. If you have not subscribed to Right Now Media, you can go to our website, calvarydover.org forward slash resources, and it's right there. You can make an account. It's free for you. We've invested in that for our church. Uh, the church, our, our kids' programs, our youth, our young adults, and CCA, Calvary Christian Academy, partners with you parents to teach your kids, thank God for our Christian school. How much do we need that right now in our world? Thank God for that. If you're not aware, we have a, a school all the way up to high school here at Calvary, and I thank God for it. We're making a difference. We're preparing students for the next uh, step in their journey of being in this world, and it's awesome. Uh, just to give you an example of how we've done it in our home, after dinner, we'll pull out the Bible, or in the hallway at night, uh, my kids have been in bed, and I pulled out scripture. My favorite night was the night when I took my daughter's beanbag chair, sat it down in the hallway, and we just talked about God and read scripture together. That was a fun night, one of the best. I love talking about God everywhere we go, in the car, at the beach, wherever. I love to bring up God. I like to ask them questions so it's not just me talking. It's awesome. Those are just a few examples. And I just want to encourage you in closing, if you don't have this culture in your home, don't be discouraged. You can start having this culture starting now. It takes time to create culture, doesn't it? And it takes God's help. 
It takes time to make God the center of your life so that God is the center of your home. Be consistent and don't give up. Make God the center of your life in all you do and he will flow into everything you do in your home. I thought about this this past week. Parents, when we love, respect, and obey God, when we do it in front of our kids, they will learn how to love, respect, and obey God themselves. What's interesting about that is when we teach our kids to love, respect, and obey God, who they do not see, surely they will know how to love, respect, and obey us who they do see. So we lead by example, and it starts with our relationship with God. And as our kids see that, they also will learn how to love God and obey God and obey you. Can we take a moment to pray over our kids and our parents? We need to do that. Could we stand together just to stretch? Kids, you did great. You did great. We're going to take a moment to share a few things for the church right after this. Uh, Dorothy's going to come out and join me on stage. But we want to pray over our kids because there's an onslaught of attack from the enemy over our kids. I'm... I'm not more concerned. I'm actually more confident and encouraged by the power of God. God is greater than anything in this world. And he's got our kids. He has our kids. We as parents can lead the way. As guardians, as grandparents, we lead the way. And kids, your parents love you. They love you. Honor that. Honor that. Obey them. Follow their lead. So if you got a kid near you, grab a hand, shoulder, bring them up close. Let's hold hands together. Uh, my kids are going to come up. My wife and kids are going to come on up so, so we can pray together. Come on in, bud. This is Connor, Ava, and my wife, Rachel. Just in case you haven't met them yet, so this is them. All right. All right, let's pray. If you, if you can, if you don't have any children with you, just extend a hand out to parents around you. We want to cover them. Lord, oh God, we thank you. Thank you for being our heavenly father. Thank you for giving us our kids. Thank you for these gifts. Lord, we take our role seriously as parents. Lord, the responsibility to raise them, to nurture them physically, but also lead them spiritually, Lord. God, I pray that you would fill fathers, mothers, grandparents, guardians, married or single, whatever it may be, God, I pray that you would fill them with your power, your love, your presence, God. Draw us closer to you as parents. Lord, may we be filled up with you, God, so we can pour out to our kids as a lifestyle all day, all week. God, protect our kids. Thank you for bringing them through this past year on the other side of this COVID pandemic schooling and, and all the things that they've been through. And our teachers too, Lord, thank you. The parents, Lord, thank you for bringing them through, Lord. God, we have a summer with our kids to pour into them and the rest. We have our whole lives. But we want to take this summer, God. Some of us may have to combat what was poured into our kids. There's spiritual warfare over these children. But God, greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. God, we trust our kids to you. We trust our kids with you. We dedicate them to you, God, that you will speak to them even in the middle or in between the times that we do it. You will always fill them. God, give them your spirit, Lord Jesus. Give them your power. Give them your word. Lord, lead them, God, and protect them from the evil one. And Lord, may we do our job as parents to shield our kids as well from evil things. God, give us the courage to be more than a best friend, to be their parent and to love them and to follow your call on our lives as parents. Lord, I think about those who have been in homes that are broken maybe distant relationships between moms and dads, 
with the kids. God, I pray reconciliation over these families. God, heal broken homes and relationships with kids. God, I pray humility and forgiveness would rise up in our hearts. God, that you would bring us back together, Lord. Lord, fuse families together, strengthen them, Lord God. Lord, I pray that there would be forgiveness and love towards one another, Lord, that the past would be the past and we would restart today. God, show moms and dads how to lead the way. Show moms and dads how to teach, Lord, how to live it out for their kids. And I pray, God, that kids would give their parents another chance. Thank you, God, for second chances, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. You're so good. Lord, we commit our kids into your hands. And Lord, we know you're going to raise them up too, that we're not in this alone. And thank you for this church. Thank you for our Christian school as we work together, Lord, to make warriors for Christ. And God, I pray that through these kids, lives will be reached and, and God's souls will be saved. God, that you'd use my kids and all of our kids in this room to be so full of your spirit, so full of your presence and the truth of the word of God, that God, they would pray for their friends and there would be healing signs and wonders, that they would pray for their friends and they would give their lives to Christ, Lord. God, I pray you'd use our kids to save this community, God. It starts in our home and may it pour out into the schools, Lord, and the sport teams and the activities, God. I pray that Jesus would pour out and shine out of our kids. God, may we not put them in a box. May we not look down upon them just because they're young, but may we see them and help them to be an example of you in our community. We thank you, God, that you live in them too, not just us. So use them in mighty ways. We thank you, God. Do your work from the inside out. God, I pray that our kids would obey because they're saved from the inside out and they want to honor God first and honor you and honor their parents in all things. So save those who are far from you today. I pray salvation for these kids. And God, may we do better as parents. Thank you for your grace with us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Let's praise God. Thank you.